Yes, you read the title correctly. We're on to part four of this video series, which in a way is super sad. It just goes to show how many people really go missing and how many families are left to suffer. So please stay safe. Most of these individuals that I'm about to talk about had no clue what was going to happen to them. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 scary times people disappeared part four. Make sure to check out the other parts of this video series if you haven't already. Starting off this countdown, we have Brandon Swanson. On the night of May 13th, 2008, 19-year-old Minnesota student Brandon Swanson was on his way back home from a party. That's when he drove his car into a ditch. But Brandon was fine and called his family to come and get him. It was around two o'clock in the morning when his family headed out to the location where Brandon said that he was. But when they got there, Brandon and his car were nowhere to be found. They called Brandon and talked to him for 47 minutes while trying to locate his whereabouts. The call ended abruptly with Brandon saying, oh shh, and his phone went dead. That was the last time Brandon was ever heard from. Now, his car was eventually located by police, but Brandon was never found. Police originally suspected that he fell into a river and then drowned. Well, police dogs did trace his scent to a river's edge, but then his scent continued on, leading them to believe that he did fall into the water, got out, and continued walking on. But his body was never found. In our ninth spot, we have Paula Weldon. On December 1st, 1946, Paula Weldon, a sophomore at Bennington College, disappeared while on a hike. Apparently, she was walking the trail by an elderly couple. They claimed that she was about 100 yards in front of them. However, she turned a corner and when they reached the same corner, she just disappeared. She was nowhere to be seen. And no evidence has ever been found. Now, at the time of her disappearance, Paula was wearing a bright red jacket. And what's weird is that a couple years later, another person wearing a bright red jacket went missing in the same area. It may just be a coincidence, but it's a pretty freaky one. In our eighth spot, we have the Springfield Three. In 1992, best friends Stacy McCall and Suzanne Streeter and Suzanne's mom, Cheryl Levitt, all went missing without a trace. On June 17th, 1992, the two girls left a graduation party and headed back to Suzanne's home where they planned to spend the night. It's thought that they arrived at the home because their clothes, jewelry, purses, and vehicles were there. But the next day, the girls didn't follow through with their plans to meet other friends. When the friends arrived at the house, the porch light was broken with glass all over the porch. Suzanne, Stacy, and Suzanne's mother were nowhere to be found. Now, in 1996, a convicted kidnapper and robber in Texas did come forward and say that he knew that the Springfield Three were dead. However, he never said he was responsible for the death. He just said, I just know they're dead. To this day, we don't know what truly happened that night in June. Coming in at number seven, we have Tony Jones. The mysterious disappearance of Tony Jones continues to baffle the people of Perth, Australia. Tony was out on a six month hitchhiking trip around Australia. Towards the end of his journey, he planned to head home to Perth for Christmas. His plan was to meet his brother Tim in Mount Isa, but he never showed up. Now he told his family that he was going to catch a ride along the Flinders Highway to get to his brother, but that highway has been dubbed the Highway of Death. No one has heard from Tony since. His brother is adamant that he was picked up by a group of people that then killed him and disposed of his body. However, this case still remains unsolved. Making our way down the list at number six, we have Brian Schaffer, another super puzzling disappearance. On April 1st, 2006, Brian Schaffer disappeared without a trace. At 1.15 a.m., he went to a local bar with his friends, but he never came out of the bar. He just seemingly disappeared. Security footage of the area showed that Brian never exited the bar. The police even searched the alleyways, nearby trash cans, and rivers, but nothing turned up. So, where is he? Well, some people think that he's still in the bar somewhere. Other people are convinced that he was killed in the bar and the workers covered it up. Then you also have a theory that he was targeted by the Smiley Face Killers. Basically, the Smiley Face Killers are said to be a group of people that would target and kill white college-aged men. All of these victims were drowned and found with a Smiley Face graffitied nearby. But like many of these disappearances, we don't know what truly happened to Brian. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Brandon Lawson. Another very mysterious case. On October 8th, 2013, Brandon Lawson was on his way home at night when he ran out of gas on the middle of the highway. He called his brother to come help him. But shortly after, he called 911 saying that someone chased him into the woods and he needed the police. 
When his brother and the police arrived at the scene, Brandon was nowhere to be found. His truck was left abandoned. The last time anyone had heard from him was one last call he placed to his brother. In this call, he said that he was bleeding 10 minutes away from the truck, but he was never found. Now, there are numerous theories as to what happened to Brandon. Some people believe he was killed after his car ran out of gas. Other people believe he faked his own disappearance to start a new life. Lastly, some people think that his drug problem had something to do with his disappearance. But like most cases, we don't truly know. Coming in at number four, we have Evelyn Hartley. This case seems like it came straight out of a horror movie. Basically, teenager Evelyn Hartley was at her professor's house babysitting his child on October 24th, 1953. At 8.30 p.m., she failed to check in with her parents as they agreed. When her father went over, he found the house was completely locked with all the lights on and the radio still on. The professor's child was sleeping and unharmed, but Evelyn was nowhere to be found. There were signs of struggle inside the house and pools of her blood. What's weird is that every room in the house was locked except for the basement. In the basement, the window had been opened and the screen was missing. There were footprints outside of the window. It looked like the kidnapper entered through that window and took Evelyn, who put up a big fight. In our third spot, we have Hannah up. Now this case is pretty odd for one reason. Hannah disappeared multiple times. The first time she disappeared was in 2008. She went out jogging when she mysteriously vanished. Three weeks later, she was found floating in New York Harbor, but she didn't remember how she got there or what happened. It was later found out that she had dissociative fugue, which is a rare form of amnesia. In September 2013, she disappeared again. Then again in September 2017. On September 16, 2017, construction workers found her car at a beach. Her car contained clothes and her keys. Unfortunately, Hannah was never found. And in our number one spot, we have Joan Risk. Now this case is truly bizarre, and that's why I put it on the number one spot. Joan Risk, a 31-year-old mother of two, went missing from her Boston home on October 24th, 1961. Her daughter was out playing at the neighbors. When she returned home, her brother was crying in his crib. Her mother was missing, and she told her neighbor that the kitchen was covered in red paint. This red paint being her mother's blood. But here's where it gets strange. Prior to her missing, Joan checked out several books from her library. All the books were about murders and disappearances. One, in fact, was about a woman who disappeared and left nothing but blood and a towel. So many think that she left her life to search for a new one, or that she was a victim of a kidnapping and murder. I don't know about you, but I'm getting Gone Girl vibes. Starting off this countdown, we have Owen Parfit. This case is truly baffling. One day during the summer of 1763, 70-year-old Owen Parfit was sitting on his porch waiting for his sister when he suddenly disappeared. What's odd about this is that Owen was paralyzed and couldn't move without assistance, meaning he couldn't have just walked off by himself. Someone would have had to come and get him. Because of his paralysis, he often spent his days lying in bed or on the chair outside. His sister claims that she left him sitting near the doorway in his usual spot with a coat draped over him. When she went to go move him, he was gone. There were plenty of witnesses, but none reported seeing anything unusual. So now there's a legend in town that Owen was took by the devil as a payment for his sins in his past life. In our ninth spot, we have Ronald Tammon. On April 19th, 1953, Ronald Tammon, a student at Miami University in Ohio, went missing from campus. At around 8 o'clock that night, Ronald left his dorm to retrieve new bed sheets since apparently someone put a fish in his bed. At around 10.30 p.m., his roommate returned to their dorm, but Ronald was not there. His psychology book lay open on his desk, the lights were on, and all his personal belongings were still there. When Ronald didn't return the next day, a missing person search was conducted. His whereabouts to this day are still unknown. Of course, there are some theories. Some people think he was a victim of a fraternity hazing gone wrong, while others believe he was recruited by the CIA. Now, what's odd is how a week prior, Ronald apparently dropped out of psychology. So why was his psychology book open on his desk as if he's been studying it. Seems just like a big cover-up. Coming in at number seven, we have Cynthia Anderson. On August 4th, 1981, Cynthia Anderson left for her work at a law firm in Toledo, Ohio. When her employers arrived, they found Cynthia's car in the parking lot, but Cynthia was nowhere to be found. What's freaky is that there was a novel on her desk that was left open to a page about a kidnapping. 
so people thought that she was kidnapped. What's even freakier is that a year prior, Cindy apparently had reoccurring dreams about her being abducted and murdered by a stranger. Now, people believe that one of the attorneys that worked at her law firm had something to do with her disappearance. A month later, he went to prison for dealing drugs. Authorities think that Cynthia knew about this and was kidnapped and then killed to prevent her from leaking the information. But we still don't truly know. Coming in at number six, we have Heather Teague. This case is truly creepy. On October 26, 1995, 23-year-old Heather Teague was sunbathing in Spotsville, Kentucky around the Ohio River. A witness who was watching her with a telescope, yeah, it's not creepy at all, said that he saw a man come out of the woods behind her, grab her, and drag her into the woods by her hair at gunpoint. Apparently, this man was around six feet tall with brown hair, a bushy beard, and was wearing a mosquito net. Now, the main suspect for this case was a man named Marvin Ray Dill. Authorities found two guns, two knives, duct tape, rubber gloves, rope, and bloodstains all in Dill's vehicle. He also resembled the sketch done of Heather's kidnapper. However, he committed suicide before officers could bring him in for questioning, which is frustrating because we will never find out what truly happened to Heather. In our third spot, we have Loria Bible and Ashley Freeman. In December of 1999, Loria Bible was having a sleepover at her friend Ashley Freeman's house. That night, a fire started and burnt down Ashley's house. When emergency responders arrived on scene, they found Ashley's mom and dad, both with gunshots to the head and their bodies badly burnt. But the two girls were missing. Now, three criminals were thought to be involved in the girls' disappearance. However, two of the criminals died before being able to question them. Apparently, one of the men had Polaroid photos of the girls that he had taken of them. He also had their missing posters all over his walls in his mobile home. While the other man was arrested and apparently said that he tortured the girls before strangling them to death. This is an extremely sad and tragic case. And in our number one spot, we have James Tetford. In the 1940s, James Tetford and his wife both went missing. So first his wife went missing. James claims that she went to the market, but never returned. Then a few years later, James went missing in Bennington without a trace. Now what's weird is that there have been numerous unsolved disappearances in Bennington, James and his wife being one of them. So in 1949, James was on a bus to meet his family. He was reportedly seen on the bus by 14 of the passengers. But when the bus reached its destination, James was gone. But the bus driver and all the passengers all said they never saw him leave the bus. His belongings were still on the bus, but James disappeared without a trace. Starting off this countdown, we have Brianne Woolgram. On September 5th, 1998, 19-year-old Brianne Woolgram disappeared without a trace. She was last seen at around 11.30 a.m. at a convenience store in Revelstoke, British Columbia. Witnesses say that they saw her get into a car with three unknown girls. These girls were never identified. Now, one hunter did claim that he saw a girl matching Brianne's description at Echo Lake Road, but nothing came of this lead. People conducted numerous searches of the area, but sadly, she was never found. Moving on to number seven, we have Angela Hammond. On April 4th, 1991, Angela Hammond was on her way home when she stopped to make a call at a phone booth. While on the phone with her fiance, Rob, she told him that there was this creepy looking man in a pickup truck in the parking lot just watching her. Apparently, he got out of his truck, shined his flashlight around looking for something, and then went to the phone booth. All Rob heard was Angela's screams before the line disconnected. Rob rushed to the scene, but sadly, he was too late. When he got there, he saw Angela in a passing pickup truck struggling. He chased the truck until his transmission gave out. The truck got away and Angela was never seen again. In our sixth spot, we have Annie Lee. Annie Lee was a 24-year-old Yale student who mysteriously disappeared from the Yale campus in the morning of September 8th, 2009. She was last seen entering the research building on the New Haven campus at around 10 a.m. But the footage never showed her leaving the building. When she didn't return home, her housemates called the police. Now, she was missing for six days until her body was found on September 13th. Turns out that her lab assistant had murdered her in the lab and stuffed it into the gap between two walls in the basement lab. What's sad is that the day she was found was her wedding day. Her family and fiance were heartbroken. Moving on at number four, we have Zeb Quinn. On January 2nd, 2000, 18 year old Zeb Quinn and his 21 year old friend Robert Owens were on their way to view a car that Quinn was interested in buying. They both drove in separate cars. 
However, halfway through the journey, Quinn pulled over to take a phone call. After the call, he said he needed to return home. Owens described him as being frantic. That was the last time anyone has ever seen or heard from him. Now, later that day, Owens went to the hospital with broken ribs and a head injury. He claims that he got into a car accident. Two weeks later, Quinn's car was found in a parking lot. What's weird was how a plastic hotel key, empty bottles, a random person's jacket, and a puppy were found in his car. Like an actual black lab puppy. No one knows whose dog it was or how it got there, but an officer on the case actually adopted him, so that's sweet. On the back of his windshield, someone drew a pair of lips and two exclamation marks in lipstick. The driver's seat was also adjusted for someone who was shorter than Quinn. It's just baffling. This evidence is all over the place. Now, 12 years later, his so-called friend was arrested and charged with the murder of a pregnant woman and her husband. So it's thought that he had something to do with Quinn's disappearance but it still remains a huge mystery. Moving on to number three, we have Lars Matank. If you are a mystery junkie, then chances are you have probably seen the weird and unexplainable CCTV footage from this case. The footage shows Lars running out of Varna Airport in Bulgaria, climbing over a fence and disappearing into the forest and never being seen again. The 28-year-old German was traveling with friends and was headed back home from his trip, but he was told that he wasn't able to fly because of his ruptured eardrum. His eardrum had been ruptured after getting into a bar fight during his trip. Now, no one knows why he fled the airport like that. He left behind his bags containing his wallet, passport, and phone. A couple days prior, he exhibited paranoid type behavior as caught on the hotel's security cameras. He even phoned his mom and in a whisper told her that four men were coming to kill him and that she should cancel his credit cards. Now, some people think that Lars' behavior is a result from his ear injury, and maybe he even suffered from a brain injury as well. Also, the antibiotics that he was on may have had side effects that caused him to become more paranoid. Whereas other people believe that he was a drug mule and wanted by criminals. But to this day, this case remains a huge, bizarre mystery. And in our number one spot, we have Dorothy Jane Scott. This is a really weird unsolved case of a missing woman named Dorothy Jane Scott. Now before Dorothy disappeared, she would receive phone calls from a mysterious caller. The caller would say things like, when I get you alone, I will cut you up into bits so no one will ever find you. But then other times the caller would profess his love to her. Now Dorothy did say that she recognized the man's voice, but couldn't quite identify who it was. In May of 1980, Dorothy was kidnapped and never seen again. So that night, she was at a work meeting. One of her colleagues started to become sick, so she offered to take him to the hospital. When he was released, Dorothy went to her car to bring it to the front of the hospital to get him. The last thing her colleague saw was her car speeding away. They don't know who was driving it. Later, Dorothy's family started to receive phone calls, asking if they were related to Dorothy Scott and would end the call by saying, I've got her. They've never found Dorothy or any clues to who this caller may be. They don't even know if Dorothy is alive or just being held captive by someone who is obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. 